Hello everyone, this is a different kind of video for me. I'm not considering it as part of my normal WWTV programming, hence it doesn't have an episode number. If you're not part of the sommelier community or even in the beverage industry in general, then this video is probably not going to have any interest for you. So what follows is a video presentation of a detailed proposal I've sent to the Court of Master Sommeliers Americas. This is a summary version. Uh, if you'd like to see the full text of what I sent, then there will be a link uh, to the PDF file in the description below. So before I get started, I just want to make clear that my goal is to provide one person's idea of potential solutions. By no means do I think I've got all the answers. My hope is that I can be part of the solution and that the court will take these suggestions into consideration. All right, so let's get started. This is my proposal to overhaul the Court of Master Sommelier's exams bringing relevancy and transparency to the exams. This proposal covers the following. Explain the reasoning behind the changes. Define a sommelier in 2020. Changes to theory, changes to deductive tasting, changes to business of the sommelier, changes to service, and then conclusion. Why am I doing this proposal? Well, the court's examination process is frankly outdated. Specifically, the service portion of the exam doesn't reflect what actually happens on a restaurant floor for the vast majority of restaurants. It's not completely wrong. It just needs to be adjusted. In addition to that, the tasting portion of the exam is irrelevant in its current form. Because of the pandemic, the court will not be doing exams for several months, very likely not before June or July of next year. This gives them a great opportunity to overhaul the exams at all levels. I've been in the industry for a long time. I've been a restaurant manager for most of that time. Over the years, I've seen people gripe and complain about things that were wrong, bad policies, broken system, etc. And many times that's all those people do. At best, they'll just say that something needs to change, but they offer no solution. You know, if you want something to change, you need to be part of the solution. Otherwise, you are part of the problem. My goal is to be the former. Before I continue, I am proposing that the court keeps the exam to four levels. No reason to decrease or increase the many, you know, the number of levels that they have. Let's define what a sommelier is in 2020. In 2020, a sommelier is any person who assists another in the selection of wine. In addition to that, a sommelier may also assist in the selection of other beverages in conjunction with food. Let me say that again. In 2020, a sommelier is any person who assists another in the selection of wine. In addition to that, a sommelier may also assist in the selection of other beverages in conjunction with food. So where do you find sommeliers in 2020? Well, fine dining upper casual and, and casual dining, wine bars, retail, distribution, importing, and wineries. Now, let's go over each section of the exams, starting with theory. The difficulty level seems to be appropriate for each level. Obviously, I don't really have any experience with the Master Sommelier exam, but the other three seem fine to me. For the introductory course and exam, expand that to include an online and or on-demand course. This allows more flexibility for the court and the candidates. The WSET and other organizations do very well with this. This would need to include a tasting kit, and I'll cover that more in detail later. For the actual exam, the court could use Pearson VUE or Pearson VUE, with whom they already have a relationship. This means it will be a proctored exam. And the court won't have to have a master sommelier or another person be on the other end of a webcam call either. I don't know if Pearson View is set up to give an immediate result or not, so the candidate may have to wait to get their result. 
certified in advance would still need to be done in person, basically the current way. For the master sommelier exam, theory should be uh, switched to a written exam. My reasoning is that a verbal exam is inefficient. It wastes time since it's one candidate at a time. Yes, I'm sure multiple candidates are doing their theory exam simultaneously, but that requires quite a few master sommeliers. My understanding is you have three master sommeliers in the theory exam. I also don't see the purpose of doing a verbal exam. Even though the master sommelier diploma can be thought of as the equivalent of a PhD, we don't write dissertations that need to be verbally defended. In addition to the above, transparency needs to happen. You'll hear me say this quite a bit. Give us our final scores for each section. It doesn't really serve a purpose to make us wonder how we actually did on the exam. To be really radical, give us a copy of our actual exam, each section with how it's scored. Even better, the answer key at the end, of course. I don't think the very last point will happen, but at least let us see which questions we got wrong. With such a huge database of questions, it's not likely the same set of questions are going to be seen by a candidate twice. Yes, this means the questions will eventually get out into the open, but there are plenty of other certifications out there that have, quote, practice exams, or even the actual questions you'll get asked. If you memorize a few thousand questions, good on you, man. In reality, you'll still need to do the work, read the required books, and or study flashcards. The next part will probably be the most radical and controversial, deductive tasting, or as I'm calling it, analytical tasting. Deductive tasting is a crapshoot much of the time. Even with wines that are considered the standard, it's not that we aren't talented tasters, we are, but figuring out a double blind wine is difficult. Master sommeliers will even admit that they get some of these wines wrong as much as they get them right. Maybe not totally 50-50, but it's not like they're nailing these wines 90% of the time. What we should be doing in an exam is demonstrating that we can taste for quality and typicity. This is what we do on a daily basis, making sure a wine is a good fit for our program. I've never had to blind a wine during the course of my day-to-day -day job, nor do I know anyone who does it either. Let me put it another way. When evaluating a wine to determine if it is a good fit for my program, I'm not given the wine as a double or single blind to evaluate. That is not to say that a rep or one of my employees hasn't given me a wine to use the deductive tasting grid on. In a normal situation, we just don't have time for that. The rep comes in to present a wine and we know everything about the wine, maybe even the name of the winery's dog. I don't know. Anyway, the grid we are taught is great to learn how to taste for quality and typicity. So it's not a bad skill, it's just applied incorrectly. If we do this, then the normal deductive tasting portion of the exam gets folded into business of the sommelier portion of the exam. Now, for the introductory course, candidates are taught how to use the grid in this new way. During the course, candidates can also be taught how to look for flaws and faults. For certified, analytical tasting can still be its own portion of the exam. Keep it limited to still wines though. When I took my certified in 2013, there wasn't a business portion of the exam. That is only in the two higher levels. Though, there could be some business elements put in there. You know, maybe an easier version of the upper two levels. For advanced and master sommelier exams, this is expanded to beer, spirits, and faults. Spirits and dessert slash fortified are already part of the business portion of the exam. So that's why I say shift all tasting to this part. That's also why I could see only doing still wines for certified. Otherwise the court would need to teach the others during the introductory course. Again, maybe have a section on flaws and faults for the intro, but don't really test for it in certified or do test for those. I I'm good either way. During this portion of the exam, the candidate is evaluating each beverage and determining how each would be used in a program. In order for the candidate to effectively do this, the court needs to create a well-defined list of testable examples, specific brands that represent the standard. To decide this, 
create a committee of industry leaders. This isn't to insult anyone who doesn't make the list. These producers need to be widely available at various price points and are commonly thought of as setting the standard. Now, this is not the same as an iconic producer. Very likely, they're a maverick anyway. They have their place, but candidates need to know what to study. That doesn't mean an iconic producer couldn't be on the list either. They may be iconic because they are the standard bearer. Let me put it this way. You're in your first day of class and your professor is telling everyone what the quizzes, midterms, and the final will be like, where the questions will come from. This is almost always from the assigned reading and lectures. You get ready for the final and the professor decides that he or she is going to throw in some questions about material that would be covered in a more advanced class or some theoretical work they're working on uh, or something like that. And were you prepared for that? No. Set the standards. Something else I'll be repeating. And this list is public knowledge, not some internal master sommelier only list. The court has an advanced course that is required to take before you take the advanced exam. It's done on different dates than the exam. Many of these concepts are actually part of that course, but they really could expand on it. The business portion of the exam needs to be relevant to what we do on a daily basis, at least as generically as possible. Now, in addition to tasting happening here, shift some, if not all, of the cocktail and beer service to this portion. I'll explain that next. Okay, service. Restaurants have been changing dramatically even before this pandemic. Post-pandemic is going to be a completely different landscape. When it comes to wine service, we are already in a more casual environment. There are fewer fine dining environments. Now, let me, let's, let me, let me be clear about this. There are still a lot of them, but even they are being more practical when it comes to wine service. It doesn't mean we don't need standards. We, we need them. In general, the standards the court has, one of the few they actually publish, just, they just need some tweaking. To reflect a more casual wine world, only require business casual for the exam. If you wear a suit, that's great, man. Awesome. In many ways, wearing a suit has its advantages. The court already adopt, adopted this dress code for its advanced course back when I took it, or at least for the men. I know women struggle with finding similar clothes that are functional in a restaurant. That, that means pockets, right? I hear it all the time. Since I passed my certified exam in 2013, the actual service scenario has changed. Let me rephrase that. We are still given a scenario when it comes to the type of table, but the style of restaurant isn't a generic restaurant and having to come up with wines on the fly. You are now given 15 minutes to review the food and wine menus right before you go into the room. I think this is great. It would have been nice to have known this ahead of time so I didn't waste my time coming up with this 400 wine mock list in my head. Plus, both menus were at each table to reference, just like a real restaurant. In my case, it was an Italian restaurant. We all got the same scenario. If we had to do two more exams this year, the style of the restaurant could have been different. It probably would have been different. Now, this is where you could reference those iconic producers. Now, I'm not asking the court to publish all of this. Just give some guidance as to the type of restaurants to expect at each level. The higher level exams could have the potential of having harder styles of food and wine. From what I saw at my exam in March of 2020 this year, a scenario needs to have the following criteria. Still wines, multiple red and white still wines, champagne method wines, wines with significant age, dessert slash fortified wines, local beer or you know, beer specific to the scenario, cocktails, aperitifs, and digestifs. Now, the last two wouldn't really be on the menu. You, you could put them on there, but you're definitely gonna get asked about them. Now, taking these criteria into consideration as a candidate progresses higher, then more difficult scenarios can exist. The court may combine a couple countries that make sense for food and wine in order to have enough established styles of wine, not every country produces every style enough to make sense to be in service. And I would expect the higher level exams to be a restaurant based upon a small wine producing country. Uh, the likelihood of a restaurant needs to be taken into consideration. Niche restaurants make sense in a place like New York City, but honestly not in Peoria, Illinois. When it comes to wine service, we still do champagne and decanting. 
Certified is strictly champagne. From my memory, the court never commits to that. There's always this, you never know, mentality that a candidate will do decanting instead. But it's always sparkling wine or champagne service. Now, maybe, maybe this has happened, maybe the decanting has happened somewhere, but I've never heard of it. It's another example of this unnecessary secrecy the court has. The next two levels, you do both. Eliminate the gear don. It, it, it's a relic anyway. Even some of the best fine dining places out there use side stations or just use the table itself instead. I will say that for my exam this year, we didn't have a gear don either. We used a side station. Now for decanting, the reality is that we are going to use a filter instead of a candle. Maybe if it's a slow Monday night and I have plenty of time to do the whole shebang, but the reality is a sommelier will get into a situation where they need to decant wines from multiple tables at the same time. So yeah, maybe we simulate the candle still, but it's antiquated in this day and age. What makes sense for the real world? That's really my point here. Now, for beer service, maybe I missed it somewhere, but I really don't remember being taught proper beer service at any point by the court, nor is it anywhere on the court's website. So if they want us to physically do beer service, define what that is. Cocktails. Right now at the advanced and master sommelier exams, we make a cocktail. Typically it's pretty easy. Realistically, we're not going to have to make something with like five plus ingredients. That doesn't mean you shouldn't know the more complicated ones, especially if they show up on the business portion. However, I propose that we no longer make a cocktail during the service exam. In the real world, the bartender is going to make that cocktail anyway. That doesn't mean we shouldn't know the recipe, bill, etc. So if the candidate isn't going to make the drink, the argument is, what about a sommelier being the bar manager or beverage director? If you don't know how to make it, how can you be in charge of training? To that, I say you don't need to be an expert bartender to train someone how to make a drink. Besides, I'm not saying the candidate doesn't know how to make it, just that they don't need to make it for an exam. Remember, we're trying to simulate the real world, not the way things used to be in the 70s. And let me expand on that just a little bit more. You know, I was the sommelier and assistant manager, or more correctly, the assistant manager and a sommelier at my last restaurant job. Well, two restaurant jobs ago. So yes, I was in charge of front of house training. That's because in a place like San Antonio, there really are no jobs that are just sommelier. You're usually a saw manager, but places like New York, Chicago, San Fran, LA, larger cities that have a really big culture, you could have restaurants, even Houston, you could have restaurants that you have just a sommelier. They may not be in charge of front house training. And that actually shows because a lot of them don't know their business side of things, why the business of sommelier is really important in the exam. But I digress a little bit. The point is that just because you're the sommelier doesn't mean you're in charge of training, but you need to know everything there is about those cocktails, those beers, and everything else. All right, so during service, we should be able to suggest appropriate beers and cocktails. In addition to that, there are aperitifs, digestifs, desserts, slash fortified, et cetera. I would say that this is advanced and higher for the most part for exams. For these, make sure the proper service standards are established and publicly available too. Scoring. Service has been notoriously subjective in the past, or at least that's the assumption. We know there's a checklist, so let us know what those standards are. I've worked for restaurants that do server audits before a server can hit the floor after training. You know what we did? We let them see that checklist. No surprises. And everything has set value. Let us know what is expected and give us our score. Resources. I've basically covered a lot of this already. Now, the court has a limited list of standards and examples, and it actually does have a really good list of books and publications to read. But this is what the court should have available for us in addition to what they already have. Clearly defined standards and expectations for all sections. Freely available on the website, these standards. Possibly make certain resources available to those, quote, in the system, that is, Sign up for, say, the intro course and have an account with the court. An advisory committee that determines standards for wines. So that would be producers and standardized examples of wine styles. Spirits, beers, and classic cocktails that we need to know the, need to know the recipes for. What are the challenges right now? Because of the scarcity of master sommeliers, 
there is a logjam to get into the advanced and master sommelier exams. These changes could allow more candidates per exam due to better efficiency. To be fair, the scarcity of master sommeliers is probably not the only reason for the limited number of exams, but it's almost certainly a part of it. Anyway, more candidates brings in more revenue or profit, especially if it requires less master sommeliers at the higher level exams to administer the exams. The advanced exam could potentially be offered more than three times per year, maybe four, five, or more. Same for the course. It is only offered once per year. The same could be said for the master sommelier exam. It's only offered once per year. This would lead to more people passing, not necessarily a higher passing rate, just more people taking it at the same passing rate equals more people passing. It will help reduce the negative perception that master sommeliers is a men's club. Instead, it becomes a growing diverse group of men and women from all walks of life. Now, believe it or not, this is true, well, to some extent, not as much as we would like, but it does exist in a limited fashion right now. We just need more of it. And by having more master sommeliers, more upper level exams can be done as I've already mentioned. In conclusion, what I'm proposing is this, more transparency, clearly defined standards, set expectations, make sure we know all the rules, scores revealed for all sections, also reveal scoring systems for all sections, have specific direction, and answers. Now, I know maybe not practical, all right? Reveal the wines, especially if you're going to keep the deductive tasting in its current format. And finally, officially sanction the use of post -nominals. We should be proud to not only wear our pin, but also display our certification on our business cards, online profiles, and signatures. It's not like we don't already do it anyway. I'd like to end with something I said at the beginning. My goal is to provide one person's idea of potential solutions. By no means do I think I have all the answers. My hope is that I can be part of the solution and that the court will take these suggestions into consideration. I hope all of you got something of value from this and will voice your opinion to the court. Let them know what you want to see with the exam. If you agree with something I mentioned here, then let them know. If you have a different or even better idea, then let them know. Putting that in the comments of this video, while you can, honestly serves no purpose. You need to let the court know. Anyway, thank you for your time.